y'all. It's Dr. Know-It-All. I was not planning on doing this tonight. I was actually going to do another video and then I was going to talk about this tomorrow. Anyway, things got messed up because I got so excited about what Elon Musk was talking about in the Q2 2023 earnings call. I'm going to do this in one shot. So there's going to be bobbles and stuff. This is off the cuff. Just heard this, but I got super excited about it. I first of all want to start off with the fact that I absolutely love that Elon Musk spent the earnings call talking about the future and how exciting the future is rather than spending any time talking about money and stuff. Zach did talk about that afterwards. I'll leave other people who care more about the finances for that. But uh, the one sort of big ticket item is that 9.6% operating margin, which is down a great deal from the, the previous quarter. So as I said here, I, I made this note as I was typing along. I was like, who cares? It, it really doesn't matter to me at all. Again, I'm just not an investor. I'm much more of a tech geek. And so I love the tech stuff. So anyway, I, I'm first going to start with just a couple of other notes from the bottom here, but I want to talk about full self-driving and all that kind of stuff at first. So the first thing is Cybertruck production candidates are coming off the line as we pretty much already knew. But the interesting stuff here you know, four doors, six foot bed, and it fits in a 20 foot garage. I'm pretty sure ours is a 20 foot garage. I don't know. Anyway, we do have some shelves and stuff at the front. So I guess we'll have to remove those if we want to get it in. But that's really, really impressive that they're going to be able to fit such a big truck in such a small space. And he says, uh, like a TARDIS, <laughs> that's my comment, by the way, it should feel bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside and that they spent a huge amount of time you know, down to the last millimeter, figuring out exactly how to design this truck. They wanted it to be not too big, not too small to fit in the Goldilocks zone. So very, very cool. Maximum utility for volume. That's kind of what he said as well. We also then have... Um, uh, so some other very important stuff. Superchargers, there are 50,000 connectors now globally. That's amazing. 5,000 locations, so around 10 connectors per location. Uh, that's just amazing that they've got 50,000 of those. That's, I don't know how many gas pumps there are in the world, but it's, I'm sure it's in the millions. But still, 50,000 EV charging connectors is just impressive. And Tesla has done that all themselves. The North American charging standard, of course, is being picked up by more and more people, including Nissan recently. I think that was today. Maybe that was yesterday. And here's the really interesting thing is that they say, Elon said, we are in early talks or early discussions <clears throat> with a major OEM about licensing full self-driving. My guess would be Ford. I'm certainly not going to put that in anyone's mouth, but that they, they seem to have the best relationship with Ford. So it would not surprise me at all to hear Jim Farley talk about that. Tasha Keeney made a note about that it, you know, and said like, wow, this is this is a big deal. And Elon Musk responded to that just a few minutes ago and said, yes, this is a big deal. So it is a big deal. If Tesla can solve full self-driving and then if they can start licensing it to other companies, holy mackerel, the sky's the limit in terms of the amount of income that they can generate from this stuff. So um, they, you know, he then said, we're going to make as many cars as we can by while maintaining healthy margin margins and a AI is entering a new era, which is amazing. There's so many good quotes in this. I don't even know what to put as the quote for the title of this video. <laughs> You'll get to find out afterwards, but that's a good one. AI entering a new era. So he did say uh, up here at the top that... Um, for the robo taxi that the robo taxi should be the highest volume car ever made i believe he said by a big margin that's what i typed up at least and in, importantly it's going to have revolutionary design and revolutionary manufacturing so i don't know what it's going to look like i believe that this is probably not going to be the model two you know the thing that's being made in mexico is going to be perhaps a prototype version of the robo taxi but the robo taxi itself might have things like i mean i'm, I'm sure that the real robo taxi is not going to have a steering wheel and pedals but maybe it'll have more of like you know seats facing each other more like a, a, a bus or something I, I don't even know <laughs> if it's a revolutionary design and revolutionary ma manufacturing techniques it sounds like they have a pretty solid idea of what that's going to be too so super super exciting <clears throat> So then he starts talking about the full self-driving and dojo. He says there is no substitute for massive data, and he returns to that several times. The more training samples, the better the results. 
And he specifically, you know, noted this by saying like, you know, you have, you give it 1 million samples of a specific thing and you get nothing useful out of it. You give it 3 million and you start to see results. And then by the time you get up to about 10 million examples of a specific thing, it starts to produce great stuff. But to get 10 million edge case examples requires a massive fleet collecting massive amounts of data. <clears throat> and that he then turned to after that and said, Tesla collects more than any other company by an order of magnitude, more data than any other company by an order of magnitude. He says that Tesla alone might be responsible for collecting more than 90% of all driving mile data that's ever been collected or is currently being collected. I'm not exactly sure. <clears throat> so anyway, he then said success in AI is a combination of talent, unique data, and compute resources. So that's really interesting. Talent, which of course is the people. You get a small team of people that are excellent at what they do, you, you know, and they can kick ass more than a big team of mediocre people for sure. Unique data, that's the stuff that they're collecting from the fleet. If you're driving a Tesla right now, you are contributing to that. And then of course, compute resources, which is where things like NVIDIA's hardware, their GPU hardware, <clears throat> and also um, uh, especially Tesla's Dojo is going to be a really, really big deal. He then said success, and that should have two S's in it, in AI is a combination of talent, unique data, and compute resources. He then said success in AI is a combination of talent, unique data, and compute resources, and he doesn't know how anybody else could do it, even with people and compute power without the data, and nobody else has the data, so <clears throat> hint, hint. <laughs> then he turned to say, talking about Dojo. Dojo is designed specifically to reduce the cost of neural network training, specifically for video. It was developed specifically for video and of course for neural networks. And there is a quasi-infinite demand for vast training resources. You know, Dojo as a service is on the horizon. You can tell if there is this demand and they can build out Dojo they eventually are going to be able to rent out time on Dojo and they're going to be able to make money in yet another way. It's just amazing. And uh, Elon reiterated 100 exaflops of compute power by the end of 2024. So approximately 18 months from now, currently 10 to 15 exaflops, something like that. So about an order of magnitude more <clears throat> in terms of compute power in the next 18 months, which is amazing. Then we turn to something really amazing, 300 million miles driven on FSD beta. That was 200 million miles, not a very long time ago, like a month or something. It was very short time ago. So yeah, so I said exponentially growing. And then he immediately said, however, that's going to seem small quickly. Soon there will be billions and tens of billions of miles driven on FSD beta. So this is a rapidly expanding fleet of vehicles that are using FSD beta more and more and more time. That's not driving in shadow mode. That's not the amount of miles that the cars are driving. If I'm understanding correctly, this is actual FSD beta miles that are actually being driven by people, but by the car with the person monitoring it. So <clears throat> the exponential data growth means that we're not just looking at where we are currently and what things are like, it means that we're not just where we are currently and what things are looking like, but how things are ramping up. And of course, that's being combined with more and more and more compute power to analyze that data and to train the neural network. And then I wanted to highlight this, clear path to full self-driving being 10 times better than a human driver. You read that right. Clear path, that means they, they, they see the, the projected trajectory of all of this, don't see any blocks, don't see like they're gonna run into a wall, don't see this thing tipping over and hitting kind of a, you know, a flattening part of the S curve. They see a clear path to being 10 times better than a human driver. I, I asked the question of average or best human driver. It's probably going to be average because there are always people at the tail end of anything. You know, think of a professional athlete or something. You know, you probably pay, play baseball at a certain level or tennis or whatever. A professional athlete is at the very, very far tail end of that. So maybe it will be like on the order of the best, best, best human driver, but 10 times better than an average human driver is still immensely impressive. And there's a clear path to that. And of course, Optimist is involved in all of this as well. And he says that they are at the cutting edge of AI development. So I'm just, again, blown away by what he's talking about here. Again, he just really quickly mentioned the 9.6% operating margin. He's like, whatever, don't care about that. And I, as a person who, you know, <laughs> I'm not your traditional investor. I'm much more of a geek. I would rather invest in a company that I strongly believe in. 
and that's exactly what I'm doing. I, I personally, and again, not, you know, not financial advice, all of that kind of stuff, do your own research, but I am extremely impressed by what's going on. I'm extremely impressed by how excited Elon is about the future, specifically about AI and about manufacturing. He specifically talked about robo taxis, which are, you know, not model two, not the next model car, but he talked about robo taxis and he talked about full self driving. And he has recently mentioned that full self driving would come out of beta. They've recently been hinting very strongly that they are using some sort of end to end neural network that's creating a world model on its own right. This is all my speculation, of course, but that's based on the, you know, connecting the dots that I've seen together. And then you get him saying that they have a clear path to full self driving being 10 times better than a human driver right in an earnings call. That's a pretty official place to be announcing something like this. And yes, of course, they say, you know, at the beginning, Martin Vieja immediately said, like, this is all forward looking. This is all speculative. Don't take this. Take this with a grain of salt, in other words. But Elon is very confident about this stuff. And that's incredibly exciting to me. Uh, we've been waiting for a while. It seems like a long time since the mid 20 teens when we've been like, oh yeah, full self-driving was right around the corner and it was going to drive us. And it feels to me like what we're driving right now, 11.4.4 or whatever, that that is going to feel incredibly primitive when we get the next version of this thing. There's going to be a major step change that is going to happen sometime not that far away, certainly by the end of this year. Hopefully within the next couple of months, we'll see a version 12 or something that's just a totally redone version of this software. And it's going to drive so much better. And that's going to be the point where everybody else is going to wake up. And then of course, Ford or whoever the major OEM is, if they license full self-driving software, then you're looking at Tesla. The, the dominoes, just like with North American charging standard, the dominoes are going to go bang, 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 and they're going to fall because everybody else is going to have to get in line because if they don't have that, they're just going to look like a primitive car, right? It would be like going and getting like a car that was built in the 1970s and not a classic vintage car, but just like a really boring, uh, oh gosh, what were those? <laughs> I don't remember the ones that the Ricardo Montalban used to like uh, talk about or something anyway, but you know, really boring 1970s car. And you're like, why would I drive that thing when I could drive a modern car? I think that all other vehicles, once you have full self-driving really enabled, are going to seem incredibly primitive. And of course, Tesla is looking at producing as many robo taxis as possible because they see the, the, the opportunity, the total addressable market for this is just massive. So anyway, we will see what happens in the future. Of course, this is all speculation, but I, for one, am incredibly excited about all of this. I hope you are too. Again, not financial advice. Actually, I didn't hardly even talk about the financial stuff, but if you're not excited about Tesla right now, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to make you excited. I'm like, I'm, you know, I, I can't wait for AI day three. I think that's what it is. It's I'm like, just, just like, like basically bouncing up and down, waiting for a Tesla to announce AI day three, so we can get more insight into specifically what they're doing. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter or whatever all that good stuff is. You know the drill and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.